Ari Bonville Foster. I am so excited to have you here on Confidence Conversations. I'm excited to be here. I, I'm like, we're going to have a great time. <laughs> we are, and you know how we get down. I want to start with what does confidence mean to you? Confidence means to me that I show up as my best authentic self. As long as I can show up and feel like I'm me, but I'm the the best version that I can possibly be at that moment, then I can show up confidently in any situation. Yeah, I love that. But that is easier said than done. There's a vulnerability in authenticity, right? So tell me how you do that. So it's not always easy. And I always like to stress that because there have definitely been moments and I'm sure there'll be moments that come up in the future where I get in new situations that I may not have prepped myself for. And I and I may find that I all of a sudden have imposter syndrome and I have to sometimes put myself in check and say, wait a minute, you're amazing. You're just as awesome as everybody else. You got this. And so sometimes I find, like I said, I get in these situations where I have to give myself a little bit of a pep talk. Um, but All in all, I think just knowing who you are at your core will help you show up more authentic and confident in yourself. Because when you always are maybe comparing yourself to others or talking down to yourself, like all that negative self-talk gets in, um, I think that then makes it very hard for you to show up as the best version of yourself because you're wondering, is my version of myself in this moment as amazing or as unique or as driven as the person next to me? And comparison is the stealer of joy. So if I want to show up authentically confident as myself, I definitely have have to put those um, negative thoughts out of my head as best I can. You know, it's so true. And we do have this tendency to compare, right? And I think that that comes from this place of lack or a scarcity mindset, right? Because when we compete and compare, we're basically saying that there's not enough for all of us, right? And so I have to be better. And therefore, I have to measure my value against you and against everyone around me to make sure that I'm measuring up. And that's such a myth, right? Like we all have a single unique purpose in this world and a calling that only we can fulfill. And even if like we are in the same industry or even doing similar work, the way that I do it and the way that I come and bring my talents, my skills, my purpose to the table is going to be so unique from anyone else. I think once we kind of realize that and really wrap our minds around that, we let that thought of competing, comparison drop drop away. And then we're able to really embrace friendship, opportunity, and lo and behold, embrace ourselves. Exactly. I, I think you're right. Because I know for me, just giving a real life example, I I work mostly in a virtual space. And so I feel really amazing in my office, in my home, doing my thing. And then, you know, post COVID, I had to go back into the real world. And I ended up in an event full of highly educated women doing their daggone thing, right? They're showing up as their best self. And I remember for, for a moment, just feeling really small, like, oh my gosh, I'm this little person in this sea of giants. And, and then I had to say, wait a second now, I'm here too. So, you know what I mean? If we all at the same place, then maybe I'm not as small as I thought I was. And then when I started to mingle with people and realize that they were interested in what I had to talk about in my life, and they thought that was pretty amazing, then, you know, I started being like, okay, Corey, hold on a second. You're pretty awesome too. And I was able to kind of build myself up in that moment. And I think for most people, they're going to be at least sometimes in life where you kind of fall into that situation where you're going to get around somebody who's going to be like, you're going to, you're going to feel like, okay, hold on now. Am I supposed to be here? Am I in the right room? And the best part about feeling that way is you got to realize you're in that room for a reason, right? You're in the room, you know, where things happen and you have to start telling yourself, like, if I'm here too, I'm meant to be here and I can do this. And I think that realization is key, right? And it it comes like, we, we get so nervous with all this comparison that we forget girl, like you're here too. You have a purpose as well, right? And you've earned your spot. Um, But that's where that, you know, creature of imposter syndrome kind of creeps in sometimes. And again, we're looking at, we're looking for reasons to invalidate ourselves, right? Yes. And 
it's so toxic, but we all do. And I think that we should flip that on its head because there are going to be times where there are people who know more, who yes. have maybe more years in the industry, but that's an opportunity for us to explore, well, what else can I discover or unpack or how do I want to grow my skill sets? It's an opportunity. It's not to say that you're not worthy. It doesn't invalidate who you are, what you've done and what you're going to do. It's an opportunity to stretch and grow. And I think that if we are 100% comfortable and, you know, not comfortable, but if we are the smartest person, right? In every single room that we're walking in, we're not growing. We're not stretching ourselves and we're not evolving into this better person. And life is about evolution. So it's, it's really, you know, twofold. It's one, be comfortable in the skin you're in, but to put your place yourself in places, right? Where you can be stretched, where you can grow, where you can learn from the woman, the man, the person next to you. Absolutely. I think that that speaks volumes. I know the old saying is you are who you hang around. And I know for me, when I decided to, like you said, stretch and put myself in places with people who, like you said, know more than me, um, and they had gotten to a place that I wanted to be at, I find I found that I kind of rose to the occasion. But I would never have rose to the occasion had I been just surrounding myself with the same old, same old. And that's not to say you have to leave people, you know, in the past or anything like that, like, oh, I'm not going to deal with these people. But you really do need to start surrounding yourself with people who push you, motivate you, but also cheer you forward. Um, because because we are all here to grow and to do better. And again, show up as our best version. And if your best version tomorrow can be even a little bit better than today, why wouldn't you want that for yourself? I love that. And you help people be the best versions of themselves in their business um, at IROC Consulting. So tell me a little bit about what you do. Yeah, so our goal is to help small business owners, mostly service-based, so coaches, consultants, people like that, um, live life on their own terms. So no matter their background, their circumstances, we want to empower them through coaching and marketing um, to know that they can have the business of their dreams. They can have a successful, profitable, sustainable business. Um, and we do that through two ways, typically, through our coaching, which is our done with you services, where we work hand in hand with our clients to build up their businesses to what they a dream they can be. And then on the other side, we have our done for you services um, where we have marketing products that people can get um, that can help them leverage their business to the next level. Great. And so I think one part of marketing, right, especially when you are the face of your business, like coaches yes. and often are, is putting your best face forward. But I know a lot of people, especially when they're starting their business, are a little shy about being on camera or being the face of their business. So how can we get out of that? So when I work with clients, I use something called the ARC method um, to help them move from this place of fear and doubt and all those like mindset hurdles that most of us have, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and that's because the A stands for action. So the thing that I always encourage them to do is no matter what, whether you're scared or not, I want you to take a small action, you know, and I, if you can take a big one, great, but I want you to take some type of action that pulls you out of your comfort zone that can lead you towards where you're trying to go. So for people who are maybe afraid to be on camera, I'll say, okay, fine, take a selfie today and then post that right and then put a little caption or something and the goal is that every day that you do the action you don't erase it so it's there for the world to see then maybe the next day let's record something pre-record it so that you know because everybody's worried like what if something happens while I'm recording cool pre-record it uh once you get the take you like go ahead and post it and you can't erase it. And they're like, okay, they start to get feedback. People are seeing, they're like, okay, what is this? And then the next day I say, go live, even if it's for five minutes, they go live. And usually by the time they go live, they see a dramatic increase in their viewership because people haven't seen them do it before. And they're like, oh my gosh, look at you. That's so amazing. Keep it up. And by taking that action, they see those amazing results. And then that gives them the confidence to take even bigger action. And so we almost kind of trick our minds out of being afraid to do things that we typically would be afraid of by just starting now. I think a lot of people are waiting for the right time and they're waiting to not be scared. But sometimes we just have to do it afraid and with fear and move through it. Um, because once we see those results, Results, I think you'll feel a lot better. Love that. So you took us through the A of the ARC method. Are there other parts of that acronym? So yeah, so the A is action, R is results, mm -hmm. and then C is confidence. And it really is a cycle. Like I said, the actions 
get you the results. And then those results fuel your confidence to take even bigger action. And so it just builds, 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 and builds until all of a sudden you're taking this massive action and you're seeing these amazing results. And you're just confidently walking as, again, the best version of yourself. I love that because it, it really does build on itself. It's this like huge arc that keeps going, right? Exactly. Um, but putting yourself out there, like you said, can be scary. And a lot of times we are waiting for this right moment, but that's such a myth that there's ever going to be there the right time. What's true is that I can always find an excuse <laughs> Man. To, to not do something, whether, oh, it's too noisy outside. I don't have my makeup done today, whatever that is. So how do you get people beyond the excuses? So I can even imagine with that, the small steps, the tiny actions, that there are excuses, a million excuses or reasons that we tell ourselves. So what methods do you use to say, all right, let's silence the noise and just do it? So I always tell my clients that we lie to ourselves really well. I, I, I am the best liar to myself. Mm -hmm. um, and so one way we can combat giving our, ourselves excuses and, and putting excuses out into the universe is by having the facts clear in our face. And one way we can do that is by putting our goals down in writing, right? So if your goal for the week is to go live, let's say three times, if you put lives in your your agenda three times and you don't have them checked off at the end of the week then you have not done that task and now you have to answer not only to yourself but to your coach or accountability partner to say why wasn't this done right another thing we do because people always say well I didn't have time we do an audit of their time because it, I'm telling you it happens every time I don't have time we do an audit I say every time you do something different write it down and then we look at it and then I see on their their time right that they watched five hours of TV, they cooked for five hours a day, they went to bed at 8 p.m. I'm like, okay, well, you could have stayed up an hour later. You could have not watched that show and listened to an audio book and learned something new. You could have, instead of cooking those five hours, you could have cooked all on Sunday for three and got two hours back. And so then we break those myths, those lies we tell ourselves, those excuses to say, you do have time for your business. You could have done this, so let's get it done. Okay, so sometimes we just have to look at what our excuses are and then break those away. And like I said, one of the ways we do it is definitely writing it down and being accountable to the words that we have put in front of us. Yeah, I think accountability is so key. And I think once we write down like those goals or those tasks that we're holding ourselves accountable to, one of the things that I like to do is time block and make sure that they're not only blocked off, but like on the schedule so that mm -hmm. there is no excuse. Like you put time on the calendar to do those things. So if you need time another day to cook or to go to sleep or to watch a show, schedule that in too, right? Because we don't want you to have adult life, but it's all about finding that balance. And so I know that you are not just a CEO, but an entrepreneur, um, a mompreneur rather, yeah. right? You, <laughs> you children, um, and you're juggling a lot of different things. And so I know people talk a lot about this myth of work-life balance and we're moving more to like work-life integration, right? Yes. But how do you integrate work in life? Yeah, I get that question a lot because I'm not only a mom, but I'm a homeschooling mom and I work from home as, as a CEO of my business. So we're all here together all the time. And so something that I do, and, it, and I always say it's a little different if you have very, very small children, because I have like 11 year olds and 15 year olds now. So they're they're not super small, but even when they were younger, we kind of set expectations early on that there were certain times when the kids could interrupt me. There were certain times when they couldn't so that I could be focused because what tends to happen and while we feel a sense of overwhelm is that we're getting pulled constantly in different directions. And so for my family, they understand on Sundays is my reset day. That's a day where I clean the house. That's a day where I meal prep. That's a day where Anything that you know needs to be done in our house gets done. On Saturday, it's family day. Um, we do activities, we eat out, uh, we hang out together, we watch movies. During the week, um, the kids are expected to do school at certain times. I have office hours, right? We're preparing these kids for reality. When they go to college, your, your teacher has office hours, your professor. So I have office hours when the kids can come to me with questions, comments, concerns. And then I also have spaces in my schedule where if they were to need me for you know a lesson or something, I can stop, but I do have one solid rule because I do things like this where I'm recording. I have a little thing on my door that I hang and if the door is closed and that little hanger is there, they do not interrupt me. <laughs> 
And so we have, we, we set boundaries for each other, but we also, and I think the biggest thing for you all who are struggling with that integration of your work and life, usually you're stressed because you're not communicating with your family, your friends, your community on what you're doing and what your needs are. Um, the reason why my system works with my family is because they understand my goals for my business. They have like buy-in. They're like, yes, we're with the vision. So they want me to succeed. Thus, they do the things that I need them to do so that we're not like stressed out. I communicate with my husband husband. Um, for instance, I do a Monday night live every single Monday with my community. Well, that happens to be usually the same time my son goes to Boy Scouts. Well, my husband knows not even to ask me to take my son to Boy Scouts because he's like, I know that you do this. So now I'm going to take the reins and do this. And so we can work together as a cohesive unit um, because we do communicate. Now, I'm not saying you won't have to come back and communicate again and again, because if you've ever had a husband, you understand sometimes you got to say it again, but it does help um, if I were to just not say anything, he would just feel like maybe he's being ignored or my son might feel like um, I'm not being there for him. But we make sure that we talk about things so that no one feels left out or not seen. I love that. And I think it's communication is key, whether it's to your partners, people around you, to your clients, to your coworkers, whomever. And I think that a lot of times we, we think, you know, I said this one time, you should know what it means, or, you know, we've been together for so long, so you should just get when I look like this, that it means that, how do you, you know, decode and break it down on a regular basis? Because there is this, I think, push and pull between, you know, wanting to have your needs met and set those boundaries, and then feeling like, I'm kind of over communicating here, or I've said this a million times. How many times do I have to say it? <laughs> Exactly. And I actually, for my family and for my business, I think when you when you're doing business, you have to remember you're basically in a leadership role as a CEO. And so instead of thinking of your spouse as just your spouse, think of your spouse as a part of your business. Um, just like your children, <clears throat> we have some very strict communication things where we have group texts that go out that tell like schedule needs. Um, we even have rules around if they have requests, right? If you ever had a husband and they all of a sudden and have no more coffee, right? And they're like, oh, did you get coffee? We have a rule on Fridays. They have to send me a message saying whatever they their requests are for the next week. Um, and then we also have a schedule. You talked about blocking your schedule. We have a digital um, like calendar where if someone else in the family is needed or involved or just needs to know what's going on, we just add them to the calendar. So there's really no reason why um, we have to keep communicating certain things over and over. Um, now, as things change, of course, we have to say, okay, this is new on the schedule or this is something that has come up. But for the most part, if it's a standard thing, then they can know through our text, our group text or our calendar that these things are happening with the details so they don't have to keep asking and nobody is feeling stressed, overwhelmed, or double block. And I actually stole that idea from the Kardashians. I ain't even a big fan, but they have their like very systematic way of communicating with one another through their schedule and through their text. And I find that it works. Um, everybody is now responsible for the schedule. And because they all have responsibility, they utilize it and everybody's happy because they get what they need out of it. I love that. And I think I'm going to steal that from you in the Kardashian. Steal <laughs> it, steal it. It works. So switch, switching gears a little bit, I want to talk about scaling to success because I know one of the things that you help your clients do, which are a lot of startups and um, entrepreneurs with new small businesses, scale to six figures. So I want to know, in your opinion, what is the difference between the five figure and six figure entrepreneur? I really think if you look at five figure entrepreneurs and six figure entrepreneurs, the biggest difference is that the six figure entrepreneur has really um, mastered the task of delegating and outsourcing. I think that when you are making, um, you know, when you're first starting out to up until five figures, you're doing a lot of things as the you know, the one person for the most part, you might have one other person with you, but you're by yourself for a lot of things. And you're really trying to juggle tons and tons of hats. Once you switch into a six figure mindset, you may not even hit six figures on paper yet. But once you switch over to a six figure mindset, you're thinking, how can I do my CEO tasks, right? Those high level tasks, and then delegate and outsource the rest so that we can build. Because if you are a single person, you are going to always hit a max, right? When I started my business, I was like, 
like a VA, a virtual assistant. And after six clients, that was my max for a month. I could not possibly take more because I was just maxed out. I had no more time. My customer service would drop if I had any more. And so I had to outsource. I had to bring on more team members so that I could then secure and scale to a bigger level. And so you have to first change that mindset of saying, okay, I'm going to do everything, right? Because this is my baby or um, I don't have the funds. Sometimes you have to invest in the people that will bring in more funds, which is hard to do because you're like, okay, I'm looking at the numbers, the numbers are the numbers. But when you invest in a sales team, when you invest in an assistant, heck, when you invest in a cook or somebody to do outsource your laundry, clean your house, you get all that time back and it allows you to scale scale up the way you really want to do. So I would say if you are at that that space where you're starting to get the itch for like, I really want to hit six figures, I encourage you to look at ways in which you can take off some of the hats that you have and give them to some other people, because that is going to be one of the biggest changes that will help you scale up your business and scale quickly. Yeah, I think that that is key because we can't do it all. We don't even want to do it all. But a lot of times there's this like, sense of control of like, Mm -hmm. I don't know if people do it right. There's also the, what you talked about, which is finances, looking at that. So how do we actually do the work to shift our mindset? Because I like to say that mindset is just as important as any tactical skills that you, you have. Your mindset is probably even more important than that. So how do you make that internal shift to say, before you even see the six figures, I am a six figure, seven figure, eight figure entrepreneur. And this is how I have to boss up and act in order to get there. What does that look like for you? So I'm just going to be honest for me and what I've seen from my coaches, um, getting a coach usually helps you get over that um, because they're going to give you so many things to do that you are going to just by way of the way it works, going to see you need help. Right. But the coolest part about working with a coach is that they usually have a community or network that can help you. Um, So maybe you are like, okay, well, I realize my coach says I need to be more consistent on social media, but that's not my skill set. Usually your coach will have a resource or a person or an agency or somebody to give you support. And that saves you time from finding somebody. It saves you time because usually they've worked out better deals for you. um, And then you're able to level up. I'm about like the practical pieces of it. Like, yes, the mindset stuff is important, but like, how do you do it for real? Um, Mm -hmm. And so when I work with clients, I not only tell them how they should be delegating and things to think about, but I also give them resources to do that thing. Because if you tell me, okay, you need to build a sales team. I'm like, all right, well, where do I start? (laughs) Like, how do I do that? Who are these people? And how do I even, how do I interview these people? Where do I find these people? Um, And so I really would encourage anyone listening to find a coach that can support you as you grow, because there is a big difference between doing your business as a hobby and really trying to scale. Um, And I find that there's not a quick and fast, here you go. Of course, you can go to YouTube University. You can go listen to books or podcasts and do different things. But when you have someone that can support you in kind of getting over yourself and getting out of your way, um, you are more likely to be able to scale. Um, If there were some mindset suggestions I would have for you, I would say really, again, think about leadership because Part of being able to scale with a team is understanding how to be the best leader for your team. If you think you're going to get an assistant and just throw money at them and give them tasks, you're not going to reach your goal. You have to be goal oriented to teach your assistant how to think like you so that they can basically be that second version of you and do the things that you would have done at that lower level so that you can, again, do that those CEO tasks. Yeah, that's it's so important, I think. A lot of times too, we just want for things to come out and be these canned solutions, but it's your business. People say businesses are like babies. You have to like teach them and nurture them and help them to grow. So switching gears, I want to learn about your business origin story. Did you know that this is the work that you wanted to do and what you were called to do? Is this where you started? Absolutely not. (laughs) 
Absolutely not. Um, I always say I got into business in a very non-traditional sense. Um, I have a background in the medical field. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was my passion, my dream, my goal. Um, I knew from an early age, I always wanted to help people. And so the medical field just was that place where I fed in really great. Um, and I was steadily climbing. Um, but unfortunately, you know, the universe had different plans. I have a rare eye condition that caused me to have to leave my nine to five. So I didn't choose to jump out. Um, but I did, I was kind of pushed out. I had to figure something else. And so um, I actually started my first business kind of out of a space of desperation. I wanted to do something. Um, and I started my first business. It was called I Rock Mind, Body and Soul. And I actually just sold like products. So it was like skin products, like body butters, salves, <laughs> like all those kind of fun things, handmade soaps. It was a cool business. Um, but through that business, I actually saw a gap in the market. And uh, for a lot of you who are listening, um, you should have a gap in the market that you feel. Um, and so for me, that gap in the market was small business marketing, because I would see people every weekend at vendor events selling their amazing products with amazing stories, with great quality, but they made no money during the week because they weren't marketing. And so I did a lot of research um, in about a six month time span and nothing but small business marketing. And then I then stopped my regular business and went over to being a virtual assistant for small business owners. And at the time it was just me, myself and I <laughs> and helping um, clients. And again, when I hit about six clients, I realized this is not sustainable. <laughs> this cannot keep going. I was losing my mind. And so that's when I started to build my team. And we are now the IROC Marketable Business Solutions. And we are actually a marketing firm. So I have amazing freelancers that do work with us. I have my team with me and we're able to support small business owners all over the country. So it's been about four years, but we made it. <laughs> that is incredible. And I want to go back to, you know, when you had to leave your job, right? Because that couldn't have been easy now. Like obviously the grass is greener. You, you've laid down your seeds, you grew your grass. I don't know if grass grows by seed, but whatever. <laughs> but you're, you're there and you made it. But I want to go back to that moment in time where you realized that you were going to have to make a shift or maybe that what you were doing wasn't sustainable given your health. What was that period of time like for you? I would say it was it was it was like darkness. It was darkness mentally, but also physically, because when you are making a transition, whether you're doing it because you want to or you're doing it because you're kind of forced to, it makes you have a, almost a loss of identity. Like, who are you now in this space? Before my condition flared up, I was uh, I was in a committed relationship. I was a mother. I was also very good at what I was doing, right? Like, people came to me because I was an amazing um, advocate for patients. I was a diabetic educator. I was able to help on procedures. Like, I was that go-to person. Most entrepreneurs I find are not, you know, the bottom of the barrel in their their day-to-day -day jobs. They're usually high-end um, um, experts. And so I was definitely one of those people. And so when I didn't have that identity behind me on my shoulders saying like, yeah, you are this amazing, you know, person in the medical field, I was like, okay, well now who am I? Am I, am I somebody? And I actually remember telling myself for the first time in my life, well, I guess you're just going to be average. <laughs> like, I guess this is it for you. You're just, you know, whatever. Um, and it was awful that those feelings of just like, well, you know, oh, well, throw in the towel. And, you know, I, I would love to say that I didn't do that. I would love to say that I just had this inner fight and I didn't give up, but that's not true. I definitely for about six months literally just went into depression and sadness because I did not know what my purpose was anymore. And so thankfully, um, I was able to refine a passion for myself and then lean into that and learn to monetize it. But it definitely was a journey. It didn't happen overnight. And there are still times when I have to, again, put myself in check and say, you're doing what you love. You're doing the right thing. You're here to support people. You have a gift. Because there are times where I'm like, even because my eye still flares up now, where I'm like, oh, is, you know, is this going to be like, is this going to work out? Am I going to be able to continue on? And I think as long as we are trying to push forward and, you know, continuously define, redefine and define ourselves, that's all that really matters at the end of the day. Yeah. Thank you for being so transparent with that. I think, you know, a lot of times these moments, they happen for us, not to us, but it feels like life is happening to us and coming at us 
um, in that time. And I think it's really important to hone in on that six month period, which seems to be like the magical marker for a lot of people. I've heard done a lot of interviews and have heard like about six months up to a year, but usually that six month spot, which when you're in it feels so long of like working through it and how am I going to get out of it? And I've been there too, but how did you, you know, get through it mentally? Because I know for me, it was like prayer and positive affirmations and this like knowing which that like there is an end to this, but I've got to do the deep work. So what was that process of like pulling through like for you? I think for me, because I I feel like people are different in the fact that some people can slowly kind of pull themselves out of things or they, like you said, like meditate and affirmations, like kind of get into a new headspace. But I'm one of those people like where your mom used to say, like a hard head makes a soft behind. Like I just got to hit something hard. And so for me, I literally had to hit that rock bottoms moment for me to be like enough Like, I don't like it here. It's dark. It's cold. It's wet. It sucks. I'm uncomfortable. Like, I had to be so uncomfortable, so unhappy, so unfulfilled. Like, all the bad things you can think of, like, I had to be that low for me to be like, enough of this. This is not okay. Can't stay here. Don't want this anymore. And then literally, if you can picture, like, somebody falling in a pit, it was like, we climbing out of here. <laughs> like, like no matter what, like, it was go time. And so literally, and it's funny because I've talked to my friends and family. It was like, a, it, to, to everybody else, it felt like an overnight shift where I went from life sucks, I can't do anything to, hey, guys, I'm a virtual assistant now. <laughs> because it, it was just a day where I think I was just over people telling me, Um, Because, you know, doctors were telling me, like, we can't help you. My family was saying, like, you know, we'll keep you in prayer. And I was miserable. And I was like, this mess. Like, this cannot be my story. Because I am meant for more than this. Like, I knew that my mind was amazing. I knew that I could help people. I knew that. Like, without, like, in the darkest pieces of me, I knew that. And so it was like, enough of this bull crap. <laughs> we going to do something. I don't know what, but we going to do something. And I literally did. I remember the day I sent out a, a Facebook message to some people. And I was like, hey, I'm a VA. If you need me or you know somebody who needs me, let me know. I had no website, no logo, no plan. Um, but I got three clients from that. And that's how I started. So, you know, sometimes you just got to say enough is enough. I love that. And just put it out there into the universe. Like you said, we, we it, this kind of went full circle because we feel like we have to plan, we have to do all these things, we have to be ready. But you just indicated you had no website, no plan, no nothing. You just had the will to succeed and to move from the space that you were in. And that will is enough. And I think it's so important to realize that like we have the power to pull ourselves up and to say enough is enough and decide that we want different and actually attract that into our lives with our inspired action. Yes, exactly. I think for for most people, you'd be surprised how much power you already have, how much um, opportunity you already have. A lot of times you're thinking you have to have everything in place. And I'm not saying it's not great. Like if I could go back and I knew all the things I knew now, of course, I'd have an amazing website, business plan, all the things, right? But it did not stop me from starting. And so if you're sitting here listening to this and you're thinking, okay, well, once I get my stuff together, like, don't do that. Just get started now. And then you can always build up around you. Um, I literally had no money, no skills. I did not know how I was going to help people in this new space, but I knew that I could, and I knew that I had the passion to do so. And so that is enough to get started. Now, I'm going to tell you, that's not enough to sustain. You're going to have to get your skills together, find somebody to support you, learn some things, but it is enough to get started and like I said before if you start taking action you will start seeing results and that will build your confidence to do more bigger and better things in your business well Corey you are such an inspiration and before I let you go I want to know if there are any final words of wisdom you have for us I think for me, if I could leave you with anything, I have a tagline that I say in my community and it's that I rock, you rock, we all rock. And it means that no matter what 
is going on in your life, whatever you think is the reason why you're not going to be able to be successful, you can do it. Don't compare yourself to others. You are amazing within yourself. And I hope that this year, this look, this month, this week is your time to shine and that you do all the things that you are meant to do. Thank you so much for joining me here and for sharing your wisdom on confidence conversations. Thank you for having me.